And now it's a walk down memory lane. This is my favorite segment of the podcast. I'm talking, of course, about the Ender Journey story. If you're a listener and would like to come on live and talk about your Ender Journey story, but would rather record and send it to us, then contact us via email at contact us at blindandroidusers.com. And now, here's this week's episode guest to talk about their Android journey story. And now we have the return of a very popular segment that we haven't had for a while, and it's the Android journey story. And I'm delighted to say that Joe Hodge, uh, who you've heard from already, is here to talk through his Android journey. And I'm going to pass it over to Warren, because this is, as he will tell you, his favorite segment. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, this is my most favorite uh, part of the uh, episode whenever we do have one. And you guys out there listening, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, Come on and tell us about your journey. But I'm so thankful that Joe is joining us today and talking about his Android journey story. Joe, why don't you take us down that memory lane and, you know, all the bombs in the road and all the stuff that you felt like throwing something out the window don't don't hold back <laughs> don't be bashful <laughs> let it loose boy there's been many <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually Go for it. you were talking earlier about some nostalgic devices that i was like wow that that takes me back um so i think my first ever android device that i owned was a samsung uh s9 i had it for like two weeks i traded it in for the note 9 because i wanted something bigger uh and uh I loved it. Like, you know, at the time you had voice assistant from Samsung, you had talkback uh, from Google. It was kind of competing. Uh, so I always think of screen readers as a tool, right? So like, you know, having more of them never hurts. Um, and I thought it was kind of a cool approach. And, you know, Samsung actually had at the time, uh, like a light detector and voice assistant, I believe, uh, you know, they had some interesting things that I had not seen uh, a company try. Um, and <clears throat> so uh, and they had the, the magic tap, of course, you know, from iOS and different things. Uh, so it was it was actually really cool. And then um, for me, what's always sort of happened is, uh, you know, to be fair, I started with uh, iOS on, on a touchscreen. And I always sort of get into a little bit of my journey and I go, I, I, I want to, you know, go back. Like, this is a little strange feeling. Um, and so, you know, off and on through the years, I, I, I think I had, I tried a Note uh, 20. Ultra, I believe they called it the Note Ultra or whatever they were calling it at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I tried, you know, um, on the on the Pixel side, I've I've tried a Pixel uh, 6a, a Pixel 3 back in the day. Uh, I've also gathered into OnePlus. Uh, what I like about Android that often gets overlooked in mainstream reviews. It's one reason I I really kind of look forward to listening to the Blind Android podcast. Uh, you know, off and on is you know, Ed will do Xiaomi phones. You know, different. You know, I love seeing the skins and what they offer because, you know, uh, for example, Samsung offers uh, separate app sounds, which uh, to my knowledge, no one else offers at this point. Um, and, you know, the ability to like split app uh, volumes so you could have like Spotify be at 50 percent and Talkback be at 100 um, percent. You know, that's the skins offer on all these OEMs, like just different things. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about Android is uh, you could grab you know, a, a new device tomorrow and it feels a little different and it has maybe something you like, maybe some things you don't like. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's a different feeling phone each time. And the other thing for me, as I've gotten more into my Android journey here is with flippables, you know, foldable phones, uh, I'm using a flip now, but you know, the ability that the, the fact that, um, you can have different form factors, you know, uh, you know, a lot of companies, you know, if you're an iOS or wherever you might be, uh, just don't offer a variety of phones. Um, we're all, phones keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, small phones don't really exist too often these days. That's why one reason I like Pixel, uh, the, the event is the, for what John said, and I think Warren, you mentioned it, is the, the Pixel uh, Pro, you have, a, it's the same phone as the, the XL. So it's like you have a choice, which I think choices are great for people, not one size fits all in these things. I'm going to the gym now a lot more, trying to get in shape. And I, I'm telling you, when you have that flip in your shorts pocket, it is so much, it's just, it's like, you can't even like 
imagine how much of a difference that is compared to like a candy bar phone. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's little things like that that really do make a big difference. Um, so I would say my Android journey has been complicated. Um, you know, I've, 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 I've given up a few times. If, if I could go back and tell the young Joe Hodge something that I know now, and Warren, you're gonna love this, it would be that use Explore by Touch, my man. Use Explore by Touch because I, I will say, like I, I came over like trying to duplicate what I was doing on iOS, so, you know, of, um, swiping and and going from item to item, or you know, just not buying into the whole Explore by Touch experience. And and that's something I've been doing this time. And um, it is I've listened to enough uh, of your demos, Warren, and 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 folk like all the other all the other folks here as well. And and it's just Explore by Touch for me has made a difference. Like um, I, I still think you should be able to swipe and, and have it be reliable and fast, but it is what it is. And, um, you know, it, it's better on some phones than others, um, to be fair. So, <laughs> um, I, but I, I would say Explore by Touch has helped me tremendously. Um, and then for me with the reason I kind of come back to Android and, you know, sort of it always is a, a fan favorite for me or, or or so it's always sort of in my mind is is the freedom you know like vpns you know allow for split tunneling you know that's it. on ios it's all or nothing i mean heck even on windows now a lot of times it's all or nothing sometimes with yeah. different programs so i love the fact that that android is still kind of that you know there's so many settings i can tweak uh, I know uh, Kareem usually does commentary, and I, I haven't really been playing with that late, lately. Uh, I've just kind of wanted to, since I switched back, you know, kind of as my primary phone to Android, I, I wanted to just really spend time with TalkBack. And uh, that's another thing. I think sometimes, you know, when you when you go to something new, you know, just, just pick a screen reader and go with it for a while. Uh, otherwise, I think if you start messing with multiple screen readers, it can overwhelm you a little bit. Um, learn the the things it does well, things it doesn't. And then if you need another tool, you know, get prudence, get, get commentary, whatever, and, uh, and give it a go. So that's, that's a little bit of my, of my journey, but it's, it's like I said, been complicated, but also been fun. I, I, uh, I think I annoy my wife because I'll, I'll be like, uh, she's like, why isn't your iMessage working? And I'm like, well, I'll switch back. <laughs> oh, boy, I love it. Uh, and Joe, you mentioned something here, though, and it's one of the things that I constantly hear. Oh, Android is so fragmented. And I said, you know what? That is the strength of Android because I will hate, hate, hate to have one single phone. Or, you know, uh, for example, I know, you know, Ed the belly acre doesn't like the Pixel. Just imagine if all we have is the Pixel phone. That will bore him to death. Or if all we I'd have cry. is. A... <laughs> I'd cry. I'd literally cry. <laughs> exactly. He'd go back to iOS. <laughs> I would exactly. I'd be there in a heartbeat. Yeah. Exactly. Or if all we have a is heartbeat a Samsung... in the Apple Health app, I'd be there. All we have is a Samsung phone, and I'll be banging my head up against the wall. <laughs> but, you know, frankly, I like that fragmentation because it's where the strength of Android is. You like something from Samsung, and I've said Samsung has great hardware and all of that. Uh, you want that great hardware? By golly, go for a Samsung phone. But you want a nice experience with the software. And and by the way, the uh, Samsung uh, software has really been very great. And a lot of things in Android, uh, we give thanks to uh, Samsung because they come from Samsung. And there are some things that come from Samsung. And then, so they copy each other. But then we have that. If you don't like Samsung, go for Pixel. If you don't like it, go for OnePlus or go for Sony. If you're uh, uh, Ed, you want to pay 2500 for that phone that came out in 2021. Unbelievable. Thought of Pixel is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Think about 2500 bucks. But, it, it, uh, wasn't, it wasn't 2500 No, was yes, it was. Yes, it, it was. It was 2500 Well, I, I'm talking about the U.S. pricing. It was 2500 uh -huh. The one that came in 2021, I'm not talking about the, the subsequent the, ones, but the one that came out the, the, in 2021 the, the, the was 2500 <laughs> it, it wasn't here. It, it wasn't 2500 here. Happening. Yeah, so, uh, but, yeah. but you see... We got a better UK price. <laughs> exactly. So, see, that's what we have. So, if you don't want uh, to spend too much money, you can get an A-series, you know, like great yes. uh, yeah. A55 that Karen has. I mean, you can go wrong. Uh, these days, the lines have been blurred to where whether you have a flagship or regular, 
uh, you know, mid ranger or whatever that I call them. Frankly, the performance is is just the same in in so many aspects. So that's the beauty about it. You want something from Realme, you want something from Xiaomi, like it, it demonstrated. And I've always wanted to try a Xiaomi phone. Uh, I guess maybe one of these days, I'll just have to jump on Amazon and say, hey, uh, give me one of those cat phones. Meow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Well, so Joe, what did you not like about one of your devices that maybe made you want to kind of throw it out the window? Uh, yeah, why, do you keep, why do you keep going back to iOS? Let's just ask that question. Oh, Joe, me, I've been, <laughs> I've been uh, you know, me and Joe have been talking for a few years now, and he's one of those guys. He, he's similar to me, whereas I'm jumping between Android devices, you know, like Pixel, uh, OnePlus, uh, Samsung. Like I'm jumping around between all, but he not only does he do that, but he goes also back to iOS and. <laughs> I even think his main number still is an iPhone right now, but he always has Android, you know, around. You know, he's he's got the um, he just got the Z Flip Six, and um, you know, he recorded a review for us, which we're gonna include in next week's episode. And you know, he has it; he's using it, it and he just likes to have options. So he he has gone back and forth. You know, he's had a tablet and um, you know different things. So. Yeah, Joe, what is it, and you can be honest, what is it that makes you stay on iOS? Yeah, tell us, who, who is that woman on the <laughs> on the Fruitvale side that is keeping you down, my boy? Someone is holding you down. Tell me who is that the wife? is. Is it the wife and I message? <laughs> no, you know, so I, I've, uh, I've often wondered this about myself, too. I, I think it, it may be I get bored you know, uh, with myself, you know, so like, like I, I mentioned in the top, I think iOS kind of feels like home to me. Cause it's just, it was the first touch screen I ever, you know, play with and, and yeah. got used to. And I, I think there's something to that to an extent. Um, but I, I think what, when I've left Android to, to kind of Warren's and, and your question, John, like the reasons I've left Android to kind of go back to iOS in the past has been like, I'll be using an app. Like it could be something as simple, like, uh, our cable TV app. Uh, that we don't have a TV in the house. We just watch through our phones or tablets or whatever. And so uh, like it, it may just be the app is slower on Android or it may be that they don't offer audio description and the iOS app does. Uh, I know for my health, I, I went through a health issue a few years ago and my chart that we use in the United States, like there's features that the iOS app has that the Android app doesn't. Um, and it's frustrating because I think people should be able to choose whichever platform they want. Um, I use a journal called Day One, and on iOS it allows me to record audio. On Android it doesn't. You know, there's like these little, like weird. Uh, and I guess I could record like in voice notes or voice record or something like that, and like then you know send it over to Day One, like do an upload. But that it just it's more work, right? And so it's it's just always like something like that where it's something in an app or something that I feel like I'm missing. Uh, you know, I think for a while. I had a hard time finding a good sports scores app that read with TalkBack well. Uh, I know a lot of people just use Google and like search out the, that particular game, but I'm a I'm a big fan of like a whole league of sports, so I just want to like have a screen where I you know can see all the scores. But I've I've kind of found one on Android I like um, uh, called the Score. That's what I use a lot. But so it's just it's um you know I, I think there's always just like something like that where I go, man, I'm missing. This feature on iOS uh, that just hasn't been brought to the Android app side, um, that kind of brings me back. And and the other thing is, I think sometimes I get in a mood. You know, Warren, I fought Explore by Touch for many years. I, I just did. I was like, I, I don't, I shouldn't have to do this uh, all the time. I mean, I always use Explore by Touch to an extent. Like I find what I'm looking for, then I swipe to when I need to get to. Um, but now that I'm sort of using Explore by Touch, like I'm literally just dragging my finger around the screen like you're supposed to. Uh, you know, for news articles and stuff. And it's just, it makes a uh, huge difference on on responsiveness from TalkBack. And I think that would be another big key. Over the years, I think TalkBack has had iterations where responsiveness goes way down. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I would say too, one of the biggest frustrations I have, if I'm being honest, is communication. So I've talked to a lot of my friends who do Android and iOS and Google Messages um, and I know you can, you know, back in the day, it used to be even more open than it was now, or it seems to be now. 
like you could do like signal you could you could do uh, i think even like facebook messenger allows you to use just sms and stuff and that that seems to have changed uh last few years uh but google messages for example is kind of a hot mess uh when i've used it a little bit like you have the bug where uh you know, if your if your focus is in the the message list, it starts reading all. Uh, if something were to come in and change the screen, uh, or if you bring up the keyboard, you know, I've seen I've seen that. Um, and then just just moving around the the Google Messages, it I don't know. I guess I was always a Samsung Message person, and and the, I, I know that's still out there, but they are pushing Google Messages more. And to your point, Warren, I, I always try to use what people uh, what what what's on the phone, like what's native, you know, and and I think. Like that's been somewhat of a pain point, and and the final thing would be email. I, I've I've long advocated for Gmail to fix its like weirdness. So I was using Braille screen input even like today, and it's like randomly spitting out words to me. Like I think it's like trying to do predictive text, but then I can't really interact with that from the Braille keyboard, or at least I don't think I can. Uh, it's it's just not intuitive. Um, and then if you write a whole email and you make a mistake, like getting back to edit that in the actual email client is a little bit of a pain. So what I end up doing is writing it in keep notes because it's just a lot easier and then copying it over. That was a John suggestion. Thank you. Uh, and so I, yeah, I'll, I'll write it. I do that too. It's it's <laughs> Gmail is bad. It's been bad for a while. You so can yeah, just not use Gmail, folks. Like, yeah. <laughs> that is what no, I would do. So, so to your point, Ed, like I, so you did a, a podcast on aquamail demo of that which i do use uh, you know at times but there, but then aquamail you don't last last time i checked it didn't have actions right so like there's always a give and take that you have to to do where like gmail has built in actions it's it's beautiful like i love the actual design of it like in the inbox but then you just getting you get to compose and it's like it's a hot mess again so it's like yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are the things. I see like, where you're crying. You, you, have, to, crying yeah, you have to think how much quicker actions are than other things, though. Because yeah, know, Aquamail currently doesn't have actions, but I no. mean, using it, it's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward, even though it doesn't have actions. I mean, composing is really, really easy. Because, like, let's think what an action does, right? You, yeah. You flick, up, you flick up to an option and double tap it. You can double mm -hmm. tap and hold on Aquamail. And if you know where your option is on the screen, because you explore by touch. That is actions quicker. I'm not sure it is. Well, the, on Aquamail, there are well, those. I think that it the is a little who, bit quicker, but yeah, I think the people who like the actions uh, uh, is the fact that uh, so okay, I know I have this thing in focus, and I know that if I swipe down, you know, it'll give me whatever action, so I can see where they're coming from uh, versus yeah. if say you, you know say I long press I mean, on, I mean, and I, I mean, know that's that it, yeah, my toolbar is up near action, the top. Right? You know, yeah. yeah so, but, but if your action, like your action option, is two, is two actions down, then yeah, Aquamail yeah, is probably quicker, isn't it? The, well, yeah. In a sense, it's the same. But if you, unless you know that when you long press something, the uh, stuff is uh, the pop up is near the top of your phone. If you don't have that idea, then I can see where actions may be more intuitive for someone who knows. I just have to swipe down till I get to what I oh, want. Yeah. Actions yeah. are good. They, they don't get me wrong. Actions, yeah. Are good, but, but they're not. They're not always the panacea. That, that no. Is. Yeah, because yeah, your but, your preferred action it might be three swipes and a double tap. Whereas yeah, that's fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I, Joe, I see where you're coming from because you know little things like this could be a, a huge deal breaker. Uh, for example, you know you are talking about certain apps that were not available for you, and I can see how that could be a problem. And you know we've been talking about the subject matter of GPS apps, and uh, uh, the guys on the food rail side seem to have it better than what we have on Android, and I can see how that could be a deal, you deal know, breaker. You know what I'm excited about, Warren, with that? And, and John and I have been talking about this, and and for the first time in a while, I think we're going to get to a point. So like with things like glasses coming out, like the meta Ray-Bans have, have been a huge hit in the uh, blind world, I think, uh, recently. And, and I think, like, so what happens is the blind, you know, I'm just going to call it like blind tech uh, folks have often went with Apple just because it's the biggest user base uh, of, of blind folks. And then they, they kind of ignore us over here on Android. Right. But I think with like uh, Meta or, you know, any other company that does glasses, I, I don't want to just leap it into one. But as that grows, 
I think it, it's kind of cool because it will lessen like like I, I was I was telling John, like I took the meta ray bands out and used it uh just to ask like what was in front of me uh as I'm walking past stores and I didn't have to even l- use my phone. So like I, I would actually use Lookout probably more. I think Lookout was better, but still, uh the the point is is I think when these things happen, like as we're growing in this space, it's going to open up Android to more people because of the fact that they're not going to be reliant as reliant on it for GPS, for uh, figuring things out around them. So that totally makes sense. And uh, frankly, you know, these wearables are going to be a game changer, yeah. most especially you have a glasses that could just do all of these things. Because the uh, when it comes to navigational stuff, we all navigate differently. So I happen to be one of those that I don't give a rip about, you know, POIs, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't want to know McDonald's is behind me to the left. I don't give a rip. If I want food, I want to ask for it, but I don't want the clutter. I want to go to John's house. I just want to figure out how to get to John's house. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's true. I think every when you when we're talking about a, a sort of an Android journey, I think usability, everybody, you know, like what Ed finds important or what Warren finds important is not gonna be what John finds important. I think it's it's or Kareem. So like I feel like we're, we all are different. And I think like um, we have to sort of keep that in mind. Like I was talking to the folks at OCO uh, that's on iOS for detecting, you know, light traffic signals. Yeah, and, I asked him to bring it to Android. And yeah. he, was, he was giving me stories. And then I, I, I told him, we're not talking about 2015. The phones have changed. <laughs> yeah, and I mentioned like, even if you just target Pixel and Samsung, you know, like just look at those two high-end cameras. You're at, right. I mean, you're gonna get most of the people. Uh, I mean, I, I do understand there's different camera variations and and things, but it's just, I don't know. I, I just wish that uh, uh, companies would pay more attention to Android because there there's a lot there. And um, as I've been working with an appliance maker, I don't think I can say who, uh, to w- look at um, like. Uh, washers dryers ovens and you know the, these kind of things and um i was actually really i told them that yesterday the android app is better hands down uh i mean just for a, a controlling the appliances in your house it, it just worked there the app developer who did, did the android app did a lot better than the person that did the ios app so <laughs> um i, nice. I so, so i always just use these things as, as tools and i think um you know that's that's the thing is just you know, I, I think the days of like trying, to, uh, we, we can do it in fun, right? Like we, we make fun of the other side and, and fun. But I think ultimately you have to kind of look at these as, as uh, these things as tools and what, what helps you get the job done. I'm, I'm never going to criticize somebody for, for uh, using a different thing than I do to get their thing done better. So. So speaking okay. of uh, ho- hopefully about to embark on a degree of criticism anyway, uh, Jay, do you have a difference in terms of how well notifications work across Android or iOS? So, you know, actually, strangely, Ed, you know, iOS has changed this and iOS 18, so they're grouping notifications together uh, uh, now. So it feels a lot like what Android's doing. They're kind of, they've kind of copied Android on that. Um, so I think it's getting a lot closer now. Of course, Apple, you can you can adjust it and get it back to the old way. Uh, but if I had to pick a preference, I would I do like the Apple way. The other thing that happens on Android to me, and I don't know if you've ever noticed this, like if you've ever compared, but like I'll have DoorDash on my iPhone, DoorDash on you know a Pixel, Samsung, it doesn't matter. It'll and be delayed on Android. It's delayed. It? Yeah. Like why? Why does it? Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, and you change easy. all the things that stop it, supposedly <laughs> stop it being delayed. You turn off battery optimization, dose mode, or whatever they used to call it, and it's still delayed. Like, yeah. they, it needs not to be delayed. I, I never, I, I don't like the Android notification shade. I never have, really. Um, I, like, guess what I want? I want everywhere. It's not just notifications. It's my social media. It's everything. I want everything strict chronological. Don't want any algorithms. Don't want anything at all. I want to see the thing that happened. You can, you can do one that after on Samsung phones. Not all the way, can you? Yeah, you can have. Well, what, why do you say not all the way? Screen. What are you talking about? It. Uh, he wants it on, say on any other. You can't do it on top. Pixels or Xiaomi's or anything. Yeah, why? it's not in native Android. You can't do you it. You can't no. do it. 
Yeah, well, but but you had the Samsung stuff you could do, but Warren, so, Warren doesn't know. I don't know even. I don't because I don't he doesn't care ever about use notifications. No, he turns I, notifications I hate, no, off for I hate every... notifications. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> the only thing I allow notifications for is my Telegram uh, and my messages. Outside of that, anyone, no, you don't get notifications on my phone. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be. Speaking of Telegram <laughs> notifications, I th the thing you were talking about with the delay. So I have, to, I agree with you, most apps are delayed, but the thing that bothers me even more is Telegram does not seem to be delayed. So it's like with messaging no. apps, it's true. I get them yeah. at the same time. And it's yeah. like, if you can let my messaging apps get notifications mm -hmm. immediately, why aren't you letting my other apps? It's like because there's a setting that they're not letting you adjust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're prioritizing they're, it. They're not, default, letting you, they're, prioritized they're not letting you change the behavior, which is annoying. I'm looking at the one on, let's say, on my Unigram and the one on my phone. Uh, they both, you know, hit at the same time. You know, and actually, as a matter of fact, when I have my Fruitvale device, the, it, it will even hit before it hits on my Fruitvale. Yeah. And it's like, why, I want to be able to decide that my DoorDash notifications are just as important yeah. as a mes message. Like, I want to know my food is about to be at my door. You know, this is important <laughs> like to me as food. Warren messaged me on uh, <laughs> Telegram. So why oh, is that? I'm your friend. You you got to pause the food and talk to a friend. <laughs> right? <laughs> but the, the other thing that Android does that's kind of weird with notifications is, is when you pick it up and unlock your phone, then all of a sudden, like, you get, like, 10 notifications rolling Ooh, at once. Yeah, like, for, see, that's why I don't like my notifications on, because you'll have, like, hundreds of things, uh, you know, <laughs> pouring in on you at once. And I hate that. I really hate that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's battery optimization stuff that you can't, at least not that I know of, can't disable. No, you can see what is able, it will not, it will not do anything. Notifications no. will still be delayed. Like I miss calls, you know. I, I like lock the phone for maybe two minutes, and then I will receive a missed call notification in two minutes. Is that like it shouldn't be? Like putting apps to sleep or something or preventing them from sending notifications since just two minutes. So there's something that should be fixed and something really serious. Yeah, but uh, Joe, you know, we, we really thank you for coming on to talk about your Android journey. And uh, also thanks for uh, that demo or review of the Flip 6 that we'll be including in our next week's e episode. So uh, you guys, uh, you flippers out there, uh, keep an ear tuned to that for next week. I do have one final question for Joe. Oh, what brother. Let him go. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Jay, uh, as, as a regular podcast listener, you will know that uh, when we have interviewees on, I ask them, uh, uh, what is the word for cheeks in their native language? So, please, can you tell me, to humor my idiosyncrasy, what is the native word for cheeks in US English? <laughs> Uh, we're gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the nice answer and just say cheeks. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna edge you on here. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna edge you on. So. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. you did it again. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, thanks, Joe, for coming on. And uh, you know, uh, like I said, though, we always want people to come on. Uh, you don't have to come to talk about Android Journey Story, but you want to come in as guest at any time, feel free to come on. And this invitation is open to yeah, everyone out there. Yeah. Just want to say that how it happened when I'm part of this podcast crew. I first came as a guest talking about my like really, really well popular Android Journey. And then. That was bad. That, that, you, when you, had, there, you had to check out the battery to to, to end the call. <laughs> <laughs> that I gotta go bad. hear your cheeks answer. That's what I gotta go listen to. I gotta go back and hear your journey. You know. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, the Turkish for cheeks is Yanak. Yeah, you gotta uh -huh. say Yanak. Yeah. <laughs> and it's good for Karine. Yeah, but you better not mention that to Karine. Yes. I, I wasn't I wasn't a guest actually it was uh, pre-recorded no. so we couldn't ask it 
And that's why she pre-recorded it, so you couldn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In other words, she preempted Ed. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. We appreciate you.